Good morning, ladies. Welcome at For the Girls by Shanae Pretorius. And it is such a big privilege for us to be here today. My name is Lorindi, and I am standing in for Pastor Shanae with Brucey this morning. Welcome, Brucey. Thank you for welcoming me. <laughs> I feel so special. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Good morning to everyone. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. It's raining outside. Well, it's cloudy outside, and the weather is just perfect. And we're excited to be together with you today, uh, really celebrating it. It's actually a year, Lorindi, can you believe it, since wow. the show actually started. I mean, last year, this time, all of us were in a fix uh, with the lockdown Level having been one. implemented. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Do you remember what you wow. were up to? The first couple of days, it was like like there's not much to do and then it started sinking in yeah. so this program was such a lifesaver it yes. was so encouraging every single week such a, a great encouragement Definitely. in a time where we were under a lot of pressure. Yes, definitely. And we, for that, we really want to say thank you to Pastor Shanae, not just for us being here, but definitely for us being here today, but also for just uh, spearing this vision of the show yes. ahead. Really, for a year later, we celebrate with you the goodness of God. And you know, Pastor Shanae is not with us today for this week, but we're going to be your host for today. And we are privileged to be here together. And we're going to pray with you this morning. Yes, let's yes. pray. Father, thank you so much that we can welcome you in our midst. It is such a special thing for us that we can spend this half an hour around your word. Yes. We pray that it will minister to every heart, that it will change us and transform us, and that your kingdom will be firmly established in our lives. Thank you that you are right here with us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Right, I think it's about time we welcome the ladies who are on our social media feeds this morning. We have so many people who are saying hello and joining. I think people have got their cup of coffee or tea with them today in maybe. bed, maybe yes. in bed. <laughs> with pancake. With the, oh, pancake. That's a good idea. <laughs> so we're going to first welcome all our people on our YouTube feed. We want to say good morning to Maiska, all the way from Johannesburg. Morao, good morning from Moikluf. Good morning, Lilani from Bulukwane. Tatenda Sue from Johannesburg. So beautiful from Centurion. Mashodi, good morning from Polokwane. Makoto, good morning from Soweto. Robin, excited for the show today. Helga, good morning from Mami Lodi. Devoted with Cindy. Glad I could make it this morning. Awesome. And devoted with Cindy is from Katle Hong in Spreadview. That's awesome. Aubrey, good morning from uh, Irene, Priscilla uh, from Centurion. Good morning. And all the IP girls I see. Thank you, Priscilla, for joining in with the IP girls. Unaiti, good morning. Unaiti from IP. Kathleen, <laughs> good morning from Namibia. Kathleen is from uh, Namibia. Mpo from Polokwane, good morning. Boniswa, good morning. Uh, we say good morning to Vienna, all the way from the DRC. Wow. Yeah, we're excited to have representation in the house today. Ndombi Motuachai from Johannesburg, Mujaji from Polokwane, Vienna from somewhere around. We've got Devoted Cindy, we've got um, Blessing saying good morning, Molochadi from uh, Polokwane, we've got Melissa, we've got Makotso, we've got uh, Pastor Shane. Hi! Oh, hey. <laughs> we see you, and we're so excited. I I think that's about most of the people that we have this morning on YouTube. Who do you have today, Lorindi? I have a lot of people on Facebook. I see we have people from the Philippines. Um, let me see. Eileen from the Philippines. Can you believe it? Uh, Trish. And then we've also got Chrissy from Fosli Aris and Nsaku from Giani. Welcome with us. Yes. It's all over the country. And Ifril from Philippines as well. Uh, Pauline from Hammond's Crow, welcome with us. Uh, then we've got Nox from Alberton, welcome. We've got Lola watching from, uh, she doesn't say where. Then we've got Lydia from Tembisa. Jackie is watching from Vierde Park. And we also want to say welcome to Yulandi. She is watching from Centurion. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Shanae Croft watching from Vietnam. That's Can you believe awesome. it? Welcome with us. It's so good to have you here this morning. Casey from the United States. Um, and then also good morning to Amu from the Reeds. So all over the show, we've got people watching and we're so glad that you can be here with us this morning. Yes, yes. And we're just going to go straight into our segment where we have one of our sisters really encouraging us with the word from her heart. And this morning we have the beautiful Shazette all the way, Nigel. She's got a word of encouragement. Stay tuned and listen into what God has to say to us today. Amen. 
Good morning to all the beautifully and wonderfully created girls who are connected this morning. I'd like to thank Pastor Shanae for the privilege. It's always an honor to share the good news with one another and be encouraged by the word of God. And today I want to bring some of that good news to you because we have so much that we can praise God for. And even in the times where we where it feels like the goodness of God is clouded by the things that we face that leave us feel disappointed. I want to tell you that today, all those that are discouraged to take heart, let's praise the Lord together for there is power in praise and how much more so when we do it together. Can you imagine the noise of praise that is hitting the heavens when girls are standing together in praise regardless of the circumstances that they are facing, regardless of the disappointment, the discouragement. Whatever we are facing, the feelings of depression, the enemy trying to steal our joy, but there is such a beauty, such a power in praise. And Psalm 34 verse 1 says, Lord, I'm bursting with joy, overflowing with what you have done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise, and perpetual praise means it's never ending. So join me, everyone, as today we determine to praise God, even through the storm. Let's make Jesus famous as we stop the devil from making our rhythm of praise irregular and inconsistent. Let's make his name glorious to all as we share our testimonies of praise. Have a beautiful day, Father, and get your praise on. What a beautiful word. Thank you so much, Shazette. It's beautiful. Um, we are bursting with praise. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, and I love that, that as girls, um, this is our weapon of destruction against the enemy when we come with a song and a word of praise, giving praise and thanksgiving to the mm. Lord. Thank you so much, Shazette, for that this yes. morning. It sets us up for victory. Are you ready for the word by Pastor Shanae? I can't wait. It's the next one in our tree series. Yes. And um, I know that you're going to be super blessed by it. Good morning. Yes, it's Thursday and welcome to For the Girls with Shanae. It is my privilege to be with you today and I know that the Word of God is going to be a tremendous blessing to you. I want to say a special thank you to our hosts for today. I really love both of you and it is an honor to have you take the rest of all of the beautiful ladies into the presence of God and, and to lead this discussion. As we continue our series on trees, we have one more week to go after today and it's going to be incredible but for today and next week we are going to speak about trees that we cannot see with our physical eyes in the earth anyway today we're going to be speaking about the trees of Eden and next week as we head into the Easter weekend we will be speaking about the tree on which Jesus was crucified won't you just pray with me over the word of God father we are so thankful that everything written is for our benefit all of it is given that we may be empowered to live the lives that you predestined for us to walk the paths which you determined for our feet and we thank you that as we turn our hearts our attention our focus to your word that we will not come to a place of confusion but much rather that we will have revelation that will transform us we want to renew our minds today according to your word we want to be free of all the deceptions of the enemy and we thank you that is the power of the word of Jesus it has the power to deliver us the power to save us the power to set us free from every illusion and we thank you as we today consider these most significant trees that you will speak to one and all in Jesus name amen and amen so we see in the very beginning and let's read it together from the book of Genesis where God creates and I want to emphasize that God is the creator of the universe. It's not, we are not random. We are not the result of, I don't know, a big bang. I do not believe that the word of God can be reduced to our scientific explanations, but truly there's something supernatural. There is something sovereign. There is something that we cannot explain. It's beyond our, our understanding, our intellect, and the most clever of us with the most uh, degrees uh, in all of this study of the beginning beginning of humankind cannot explain uh, away the fact that it took a God of love, a God of power, a God of sovereign intent to create the universe as we know it today. It continues to expand, it continues to grow, it continues actually, the Bible says, to testify to the creator himself. So we find 
ourselves in the book of Genesis. Genesis truly just is a simple um, name for this book and a very apt one because it means the beginning. And here in the book of Genesis, God describes to us the beginning as recorded for us through the hands of Moses. In the book of Genesis 2 and verse 9, it says, Out of the ground, God made every tree grow. Out of the ground, God made every tree grow. Shall we read it one more time? Who made it grow? God. God created everything in its initial state, in its original state. And he is the one that put the power of life into everything that he created. It says he out of the ground made the trees grow. And now specifically we're speaking in verse 9 about the tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. It says the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So when God created the garden of Eden and when he created all of the trees, there were two specific trees that he planted in that garden that, that, that are supernatural trees that are, have tremendous spiritual significance for us. And it calls them here the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now in his interaction with humanity, let's see what he has to say about these trees. We just go down a few verses to verse 15 and it says God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden this is beautiful how he first created everything for us then he made us and he put us in our rightful place and as he put us in the garden of Eden in the form of Adam it says he he instructed him or he gave him an assignment. He gave him a purpose. From the very beginning, we had a purpose. And here it was to tend, which means to govern, to rule, to have dominion, to be in a place of authority and responsibility. And that has never changed. Still today, this is the design of humanity, that we will rule, not over one another. This is not about people controlling other people. This is not people lording, bossing over other people, but that we will rule over the beautiful creation of God that we will find ourselves in a place of authority. It was the original blessing. Be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue and have dominion. And that is what the word tend really speaks to. It's a, a word of governance. It's a, it's a word of authority but very much connected to responsibility. He says, I want you to tend it. I want you to keep it. And the Lord commanded him and he said, now here we see it's a command. It's not a suggestion. There couldn't have been any confusion. So when they ate of this tree, we couldn't default and say, well, we didn't know. Because clearly here, the Bible records that God commanded, it was a command, not a suggestion, that they may eat of every tree, of every tree of the garden, you may eat freely. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to restrict yourself or restrain yourself. You may eat as much as you like of any of the trees. But verse 17 says, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. What is important here is to note, first of all, that this tree was planted in the garden not as temptation. You know, often people would say, and I've heard many Christians debate this, why would God put these trees then if he didn't want them to be eaten of? And here is the very simple answer. God says in the beginning, he made us in his image and in his likeness. He made us like him. What does that mean? We have the right to choose. And the world has no power except it is exercised in a choice. So God says, I'm making you like me. I'm giving you my nature. I'm giving you a purpose and authority. I'm positioning you just like I have the right to decide. I give you the right to choose free will. Free will was the gift of God when he created hum humankind. Remember, animals live by instinct. We live by choice. Let me say that again. The rest of creation live by instinct. They are the, the trees, the, the, the creation that we see all around us. God programmed and through the instinct, they continue to multiply and grow, but not so with humanity. We live by choice. And now, if we had no way to exercise our choice, how would it be evident that we would choose God? There was one commandment, only one commandment. God came, was with them, walked with them, had fellowship with them, loved them, took care of them, gave them purpose, gave them the power to actually um, live out that purpose. And then he gave them what? One commandment, don't eat of this tree, don't touch this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
I am giving you now a command that will not tempt you, but rather give you the place to really exercise your choice. Choose me. See, in choosing obedience, we choose God. It was not about the fruit of the tree because the Bible says, though it was good for food and it was pleasant for sight, so were all the other trees. So this tree was not more beautiful, more spectacular, more attractive than the other trees. God did not do that. He did not and he will never the Bible says tempt us it is not his nature to make us do what will harm us and so we see in this tree uh, in both of these tree but here specifically as I speak to the commandment of not eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it wasn't about our failure it wasn't about our damnation it was about our free will to choose God to trust God to obey God and Obviously, we know the story. Hmm, this is the beginning uh, where they failed at this one command because they entertained the thoughts of the enemy of Satan himself as he came in the form of a serpent. So I want to highlight another thing out of verse 17 for you. It says, if you eat of this tree, it says you will surely die. What we need to note here is that God didn't say I will kill you. In other words, I will I will destroy you. I will come and take your life away. Uh, this is not what it says. It simply says you will die. Why? There's a consequence to disobedience. There's a consequence to sin. There's always destruction when we disobey God because his ways are better. His ways are protective. His ways are full of provision. His ways are beautiful. It doesn't say easy, but they are always the best paths for our lives. So God never ever said to any person ever, well, this is what I want. And if you don't do it, I will kill you. No, but sin, the wages of sin, the penalty of sin is death. And so we saw with Adam and Eve, when they partook of the fruit of that tree, something died. The likeness of God, the nature of God, the fellowship with God, being part of his family, all of that was instantly destroyed when they sinned against him. So today, remember that as we look at this tree, God is not allowing things in your life to secure your destruction. He's allowing things in your life so that you may choose him, that you may willingly, um, joyfully uh, choose to obey him because you trust the love of God for you. And when we fail, there is grace for us to repent now because of the tree we will speak about next week the tree the cross Jesus the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world let's read now in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17 the consequence of them being disobedient it says Adam God says to Adam because you heeded the voice of your wife and ate from the tree which I commanded you you shall not eat of it curse will be the ground for your sake and in twelve you shall eat of it all the days of your life um, this is for some maybe a very harsh sentence but you know what it was just God enacting what he said he would do if they disobeyed him. See that he didn't physically destroy humanity. He didn't wipe us off the face of the earth. And the Bible says before the foundation, before he made the earth, before he made the universe, before he made us, he knew that we would make the wrong choice and he already made a way to redeem us. Jesus Christ, our way back to the Father. Jesus Christ, our way out of sin. Jesus Christ, our power, our authority authority, our dominion over every dark and evil thing. So be greatly encouraged today that God is not a tempter. Be greatly encouraged today that God is not one who destroys people, that he is a saving God, a loving God, a redeeming God. And yes, you will be faced with decisions. You have to choose for yourself whom you will serve. And in the valley of decision, my prayer today is that unlike Adam and Eve, not because we are better than Adam and Eve, but because we have been empowered by the blood of Christ, we will continue to make good choices. We will choose life and blessing. We will choose God over the pleasures of the flesh. We will choose Jesus over the temporary gain that we may have in sin, that we will always choose what is godly. I want to pray with you today, and then the girls are going to continue discussing and uh, around this topic today with you. Father, 
Father, I pray that this word today will be revelation to us, will remove the fear from us, will remove, remove all accusation from us, that we would even dare consider you a tempter, one who takes pleasure in the destruction of humankind. We declare with confidence today that you are a good God, that you have good plans, and that you have always made a way for every single person to be redeemed and to be reconciled to you. Thank you, Jesus, for being that lamb, that sacrificial lamb that made a way for us to be back with our Father where we belong in the loving arms of the one who created us. Amen and amen. In closing, um, I want to remind you then of our Easter conference. So next Wednesday evening on TBN Africa at 6 p.m. we will have our Easter conference. It will be Wednesday night, Thursday night and Friday night night on TBN at 6 p.m. A fantastic Easter conference is coming your way. It's our first conference and I want to encourage you to be a part of that. There will be the normal services, the Friday Easter morning service where it's a very special communion service for the family and Resurrection Sunday. I love this time of year because it is truly humbling to think that this great God who made all that we can see around us, the billions of stars, the planets, the, the entire solar system, um, all the majesty of the mountains and the splendor of the seas, this God pays attention to each and every single one of us and his heart is that we may be with him, that we may be like him forever and ever. I love you. Thank you so much, Lurindi and Busi. Let's take it away. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Thank you so much, Pastor Shane, for that inspiring and encouraging message. I think for so many of us, we find ourselves in a place where we are tempted and we are even scared to say we are blaming God, but somehow I think we put the blame on Him. And today this word just secures us in the fact that the love of God is sufficient and He's already made a way of escape. I love that. Even when Pastor Shane was speaking, she's speaking that free will is actually a gift from God. Can you believe it? It's not something there to trap you is actually a gift that God gives us generously mm. that we can actually exercise our right to be just like him. Yes. Isn't that precious that he made us just like him and he respects our right to choose. Yes. That's amazing to think that the sovereign God of the universe yes. respects that right and that we can position ourselves yes. by our choices mm. for blessing or for curse. Mm. I think it's so important to realize that that God doesn't curse anybody. Mm. He mm. loves and us. And He doesn't tempt anybody. No, mm. and He's for us yes. in everything, even when Adam and Eve made the wrong choices. Yes. God uh, remained fixed in his position, his decision to be for them. Yes, Isn't yes. that beautiful? I, I love that as well. And I think mm. also just to think of the many times or the many places I failed, Mm. and um, fallen into temptation yeah. and you know um, you can be tempted by anything even a piece of chocolate mm. cake is yeah. temptation <laughs> <laughs> right but even in the places where I've been tempted I'm so grateful that I can fall on the grace mm. of God because mm. it's never been his intention to see yes. if you know um, how far I can fail but he's mm. actually been so gracious by mm. sending Jesus to be on, to yes. die on the cross for us for me really th yeah. this series on trees uh, did you How know? beautiful. <laughs> Just, could you imagine that we can know so much about trees? I mean, um, yeah. I think, you know, when I think of the, the willow that is there by the waterway, uh, thinking of what Pastor Shanae has been, has been teaching us, that it's just a tree that's sitting there. It doesn't actually do anything, but it's yeah. planted yes. there by the rivers of water. Steady. It's steady, yeah. right? And yes. thinking of the different trees that we've been yeah. learning from, what, what, yeah. what tree comes to mind for you? Well, last week's tree was very special to me, the fir yeah. tree, and I just love the the um the fragrance that your life gives off that, yes. that god is so gracious in the word that he yes. uses different metaphors and examples and we are a vision to people we are oh a, fragrance a fragrance to yes. people <laughs> we are a story we're a lesson we're yes. a sermon yes. all of it comes together and and he just uses us in a beautiful way when we are connected to who he is and yes. how he works and i love it from all the trees we've been mm. learning actually a lot of them have been used in the building of the temple yeah. or the tabernacle and it just 
so. makes me together. think that together, right? Mm -hmm. None of us are, are useless in the building of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You may not be, I don't know, the mighty oak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know, what, what, however you identify yourself, but all of us are useful in the building of the kingdom, the building of the tabernacle, the glory, the presence yes. of God. Together we make a holy habitation mm -hmm. for the Lord. And I'm so encouraged, the mighty cedar, just yeah. thinking about how God will position you and just put you in a place where you can be used mightily yeah. for him, that other people can see him yeah. on display yeah. through our lives. What a privilege this has been. And the beautiful olive trees. I love the photo that Pastor Chanel posted of the, the olive grove and those ancient trees that just keep growing and yes. keep growing and keep growing and yielding their beautiful fruit yes, and yes. the oil. Yes. And the I, I remember when she posted the picture of the olive tree mm. and it was in the garden of um, Gethsemane. The Gethsemane. Mm. Um, they, and you, you sort of have this thing, I think every Christian person has this thing, I need to go to Israel. Yes. I, I just need to go see <laughs> for myself. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yes, all of it has been so beautiful. So yeah. we've been so impacted by the lessons on the trees. And you know, I love that next week we bring it all to culmination mm. with mm. the last tree, right? Where yes. La Poste said she will be speaking on the tree where Jesus was actually crucified. And we yes. look forward to that. Just the most to, important The most one. important one, right? Mm -hmm. On that wooden cross, on that tree where he mm -hmm. bled and he died for our redemption. So none of us here need to feel condemned. If you've mm -hmm. missed the mark, there's a tree yeah. <laughs> where the blood was shed and it is speaking for you today and each of us are positioned for a life of purpose and greatness yes. and being loved yes. by our heavenly father choosing him choosing life yes yes yeah. yes and so now we are going to continue straight from the section actually we have our unity segment last week if you remember ladies the challenge was uh, for us to try out a recipe that chef damien has been showing us over the past year. And there've been so many recipes. I mean, variety from baked goods to, mm -hmm. I don't know, cooking goods and stuff. You know, if you're a fancy person or you're not, you know, you can find something that actually suits your fancy. Did you find anything nice that you could make and create at oh, home? My children loved, loved, loved the cake in a mug. Oh yeah? So cake in a mug is a favorite at our house now. Is yeah. it? Yes. All right. Do, totally you, do you works. make it yourself or do the kids make it with you? They do it with me and actually Johnny is the culprit. <laughs> She's the person that spoils them with cake in a mug. <laughs> That's good. It's always good to have someone who will spoil the kids yes. a little bit for us. Yeah. We, we love we love making brownies at home. We make it with the kids. Not brownies. What do you call crunchies? Yes. Crunchies are our favorite um, thing, recipe to make from Chef Damien. And we've tried a few things, but I think I can safely say I am a crunchy making expert. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so now we're just gonna look at our unity section and we're just gonna look at what you have made. Uh, please uh, just make sure that you also participate in the challenges that we have going on. But for last week's challenge, here I take a look at what we've done together. Try one of Damien's recipes and share with us your results. can tag the It's a Go Thing page at IAGT underscore 3C and hashtag IAGT Unity. Wow, that looks amazing. I'm so impressed <laughs> with everybody's cooking. And um, I can see that there's a great variety of favorites. So um, way to go, girls, with your cooking. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, so, but actually, did you see that most people actually were choosing the noodles 
um, as a hot favorite. Um, I must have missed that one. I must go back to that because if yes. it's so easy to make, surely it can be a go a go to meal in my house yes. as well. So this week's challenge, Lorindi. We have a very special celebratory celebratory challenge. Yes. So we are celebrating next week the one year airing of the show, and we want to ask that you post your favorite uh, episode, the one that impacted your life. Maybe it made a big difference for you in a time when you needed encouragement mm -hmm. or it just refocused you. Mm -hmm. I know there's a couple of that like that for me. And you can share a meme, you can share a story, you can post anything on social media and hashtag it's a girl thing unity. Yes, that's right. Um, actually, there's quite a couple of favorites of mine as well, mm -hmm. but I think we leave the ch challenge for next week. Please make sure you participate, tag, follow um, our It's a Girl Thing page and also Pastor Sinead Pretorius on all the social media platforms. And we also want to remind everyone that we actually have our Easter conference yes. happening next week. We are thrilled to be a part of this. We haven't had an Easter conference that is so big. And yeah. so it's happening as of next week, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the evening, 6 to 8 p.m. And also Friday morning, we have our Easter service, Easter Friday service. We're so excited. Mm -hmm. We can't wait. We are Amen. gearing to get our world there. Um, if you are not connected anywhere, please make sure that you join in and you participate and mm -hmm. you will really be encouraged and blessed by the word that is coming out yes. of the Easter conference. And it's so easy to access. It's on yes. all our social media platforms and TBN, I believe. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we will be partaking of that and we'd love it if you can join us. Awesome. We are so grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Thank you to the crew in the house. Thank you, Pastor Shanae, for this privilege to be together with Lorindi. She's a champ. <laughs> <laughs> so are you. <laughs> and so, I'm so we're so grateful to be here. Thank you, ladies. We, we look forward again to being part of the show with Pastor Shanae next week. Please make sure that you tune in. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a wonderful week. No matter the age, no matter the background, no matter the journey. Ladies, this is for you. To the mother, the daughter, and the sister. This is for you. We invite you to join us for an encouraging, jam-packed program with Pastor Shanae Pretorius every Thursday at 11 a.m. For every girl, for the girls.